This is your Star Citizen 313 tutorial and easy beginner's guide. So 30 seconds before we jump in, I just want to give a quick overview of what Star Citizen is. In a nutshell, it's a massive, massive open world universe sim. There's trading, mining, bounty hunting, box delivery. You can fight players and NPCs. But the most important thing to realize is that it's early access and you will run into bugs. These can get frustrating at times, but there is a pretty big community of people who are willing to help you if you get stuck. Feel free to join our Discord. We have a newbie help channel or come ask me live on Twitch. I stream just about every day. So the first thing you're going to do is go to the website, robertspaceindustries.com. Top right hand corner, you're going to click account and then enlist now at the bottom right. If you use the link in the bio, you'll go straight there. You'll start with an extra 5,000 credits for a referral from me and also help me earn a free in-game javelin. After you fill out your information and make your account, you'll head to the pledge store top right. You'll see it. You're going to have a lot of options here. Personally, I would recommend the Aurora Starter Package. Since you can earn ships in-game and also rent ships for super cheap, unless you want to go above and beyond and support the project, there's really no reason to spend more than $45. After you buy your ship and you've checked out, you're going to click Play Now. It's going to give you a list of things you need to do. If you've done all of them, then you can click Download Now. Here you can see the PC requirements. I would say that you definitely need 16 gigs of RAM and you definitely need an SSD. Do not put Star Citizen on a hard drive. I'm sure you can figure this part out. So when you get to the main menu, click options in the bottom left. These are just some quick preferences I prefer when playing the game. I use full screen, high quality, motion blur off, V-Sync no, sharpening, chromatic aberration zero, and then film grain no. Back on the main menu, you have three options, Arena Commander, Star Marine, these are for practice. Then you have the PU or Persistent Universe. You're going to click that. You can customize your character. You can spend lots of time on this. For now, we're just going to click Random. Then you're going to click Stanton System. You're going to have three locations. You can start off Lorville on Hurston, Area 18 on Arcorp, and New Babbage on Microtech, which is beautiful. We are going to start today at Lorville. So you're going to wake up in your bed and the first thing you'll notice is if you hold F to interact, you can interact with so many things in the game, including your bed. But for now, we're going to hold Y and that's going to get us on our feet. The next thing you'll interact with is the door. So first thing, if you start walking around, you might be walking around kind of slow. If you just scroll wheel up, you don't have to press shift. You don't have to run. If you just scroll wheel up, you're going to move a whole lot faster. Then you can hold shift on top of that to run even faster than that. The same thing applies to holding a box. A lot of people ask, why am I moving so slow with a box? Well, if you just scroll wheel up, you're good. Next, we'll head for the exit. If you press F to interact and then scroll wheel, you can kind of use it as a digital zoom. This is really helpful for navigating signs. You'll see in Star Citizen has a lot of signs. And they're actually really helpful. So we'll head out of the hab here and we get our first view of the city of Lorville. Kind of run down and corrupt, oppressed by the evil UE, uh, depending on who you ask. We're looking for the Metro Center, and we're going to be following the blue line to the spaceport. While we're on the train, if you hold F and then you right click, this is going to be your quick interaction wheel. You can see here, for example, if we click actions and then Moby Glass, we can open our map from here, or it tells you right next to it that F2 is the hotkey for it. And it's also really nice for taking your helmet on and off. So when we get off the train, we're going to be heading to the spaceport. And you'll see the vehicle retrieval console. This is something you're going to get very familiar with. This is where you're going to get a list of your ships as well as the status and information on them. You can see, for example, here I have my Mustang Alpha. Its status is none right now. That basically means it's in purgatory and it can be called out anywhere. It's a starter light freight. It's got four cargo, a cruise one, and you can retrieve it here. We'll go ahead and do that. Hangar 9. We'll head to the elevator. We'll go to Hangar 9. Now, in Star Citizen, you'll be able to interact with a lot of stuff on your ship. And what it's going to look like is this orange box around whatever the interactable item, and you'll usually get some blue text. Yellow means that you can almost interact with it, but you're standing in the wrong spot. So we're going to go ahead and get in our ship. There are lots of stuff that you can interact with in the cockpit as well as the eject button. Don't hit that. It actually works. So we could fly ready our ship by clicking this button. We're just going to hold R and that's going to work the same. Fly ready just means everything is ready to go. Now the hangar doors are still closed. What you're going to have to do is press F11. That's going to open up your comms. You're going to go to friends. It's always under friends. 
you're gonna radio Lorville Landing Services to leave. Before you leave, scroll wheel up to uncap your speed limiter. This will stop you from being stuck at 200 meters per second. Or if you wanna limit yourself, you can always readjust it. To strafe up, you're gonna hold spacebar. To strafe down, you're gonna hold control. And you'll press in for your landing gear. To strafe left, you're gonna hold A. To strafe right, you're gonna hold D. To strafe forward, you're gonna hold W. And to strafe backwards, you'll hold S. Now this reticle in the middle, this is gonna control your pitch and your yaw. This is controlled with your mouse. And you'll see if you pull farther away from it, the stronger the reaction is gonna be. This is how you're gonna navigate and control your ship. If you hold shift, that is gonna give you your afterburner. And if you hold X, that is gonna give you your space break. Next, let's talk about coupled and decoupled. You can see this dot next to CPLD, that just means coupled. And you can turn this on and off by pressing V. And if you're a beginner, I just want you to make sure this is on. If you're coupled, that just means that your ship is always gonna try to get to zero meters per second. Next, we're gonna head out of the spaceport and get high enough to do our first quantum jump. It's gonna be about 10,000 meters. So if you press B, that's gonna spool your quantum drive. You can see all the destinations in the sky, and we could just look at Everest Harbor and go, but what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna press F2. We're gonna open our map. We're gonna find Hurston, which is right here. We're gonna double click that. It will zoom in, then we'll find Everest Harbor. We'll double click that. It will zoom in, and then you'll click set destination. What you're looking for is the green line that is solid. Not dotted green line, solid green line. I like to click this a couple of times. So this time you'll spool up, but because you've already set your marker there, it's gonna be the only marker in the sky. And if you pan away from it, it's even gonna give you a little arrow to which direction you need to be looking. So you'll press B to spool up and then you hold B to initiate quantum travel. So as we approach the station, you'll see these two little icons on the top right hand corner. What the satellite means is that you're in comms range. Any crime you commit will be detected by the authorities and you will get a crime stat for it. The line through the bullet means armistice zone. And what this means is that you are not allowed to fire. Now, the interesting thing about this update is you can fire, you're just not allowed to. So if you shot at the ship, you can get in big trouble. There's some station defense that will shoot you if you have a crime stat and you're in the vicinity of the space station. So if you press F11, you're gonna call for landing the same way you called to leave Lorville. It's important that you call for landing because if you try to land, you'll see obstructing parking area and pound vehicle in 43 seconds, and it will impound your vehicle. You will have to pay a fine. And even sometimes you can get a crime set. Again, you'll press in for your landing gear. So now that we've set our spawn by landing, you may be wondering what happens if I die? Well, I'm going to show you that we're going to go out of armistice zone. I'm going to hold backspace to activate our self-destruct. You could press right alt Y, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our eject lever here. So if you don't want to walk back to the station, then you can hold backspace again, and that's going to reset your character. I didn't mean for this to be so dramatic. <laughs> You'll wake up in your bed at Everest Harbor where you set your spawn and you can interact with the bed, get out. So let's pretend, oh no, you have this weird bug where you're stuck in the wall or, you know, you're stuck in your ship or whatever. You can hold backspace again and that's gonna reset you back in your bed, right wherever you set your spawn. So when you leave your hams, you're gonna see the inner station transit. Each section of the station is gonna be broken up into parts. This station, for example, has three parts. You have the cargo center, Galleria, and the hangars and habs. Hangars and habs are where we're at right now. Cargo center is where you're gonna do trading missions in the future. And the gallery is where you're gonna buy all this stuff. And we're gonna find the hangars and landing pads. If you find the vehicle console here, it's gonna say our Mustang Alpha is destroyed at Hurston, and then we're gonna have to claim it. Now this usually takes a few minutes and you can expedite it if you want. It's totally optional, but it does speed it up quite a bit. Next, let's talk about something very important. The burrito bar. There is a status system inside of Star Citizen and you are gonna get hungry and thirsty. Here you can see your thirst, your hunger. This is the individual health of each limb on your body. This is your body temperature, your oxygen, which replenishes in oxygen rich environments and your total health percentage. Simply, if this hits zero, you're dead. So if we quick buy a burrito and we interact with it with F, you'll see you actually can't eat it. And that's because you have your helmet on. So if you F and right click, you can unequip your helmet and you'll look down and now you can eat it. Same thing with the drink. You buy a drink, 
You can press drink or hold left click, and if you continue to hold left click, you'll drink the whole item. Next, let's talk about the Moby Glass. So if you press F1, you'll go to the main screen. This is your money, your name, your heart rate, your crime stat, just general stuff. First up on the very left, we're gonna have our comms tab. Here's gonna be everything that has to do with communication with other players, your party, your friends. You can see under channels, we have global chat. This is also where your party chat would be if you were in a party, or if you were on a ship, you'd have your ship chat as well. You also have your friends list. Here you can invite them, remove them, mute them. You also have pending requests. If someone sends you a friend request or a party invite, it's gonna show up here. Here in the middle, you have global chat. This goes to everyone on the server. Under manage, you can turn off global chat on your visor. You can change the color of the text. You can adjust comm sounds. If you wanna to talk to someone in game through proximity chat, the default key is numpad plus. Good evening, citizen. Maybe you didn't hear me. Good evening, citizen. Uh, hello? I... I think we're having a moment. Next is the vehicle loadout manager. You can select a ship and see what is on that ship and even change the parts out. You have your missiles, you have your quantum drive, your systems with coolers, shields, power plants, weapons. This really requires its own video, but for now, I just want to explain gimbals. Now, how you equip a gimbal is you need a size three gimbal with a size two weapon or a size two gimbal with a size one weapon, so on and so forth. Now, when you're out doing combat, you're gonna press G to cycle through this. And there are three modes if you have gimbals on. You have true gimbaled mode, and this allows you to shoot wherever your reticle is. You have fixed that just shoots wherever your ship is pointing. And then you have auto gimbal, and auto gimbal helps you aim. What you wanna look for is the dotted circle. This is what I recommend for beginners. Next, you have your equipment manager. This is where you equip all of your stuff. This is where all the stuff you buy goes to your inventory. You got clothing, weapons, undersuit, armor. If we go to the elevators outside the hab from earlier, we can head to the Galleria. We're gonna be looking for a shop that looks like this. We're gonna buy ourselves a set of armor. Get out of this basic default suit. Now we could buy it off the wall, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use this console here. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna buy every piece individually we're looking for the link set as well as the oracle helmet now there's not any weapons here but we can buy med pins now we could buy the whole stock by clicking max but we don't need that many so we're just gonna buy 10 as well as some oxy pins then in our moby glass we're gonna go to equipment manager and we're gonna equip one by one we're gonna go to armor and one by one equip every piece of armor we'll equip our med pins as well as our oxy pins then we're gonna click save and equip i like to click this a few times if you do need to use a med pin out on the field, because let's say you forget to put on your helmet, you're gonna press C and that's gonna bring the med pin out and then mouse one, that's gonna bring you to 100% health. Same thing for the oxy pin. If you're low on oxygen, you'll just press B instead. Next, you have the star map. And this star map is all of Stanton. You have four planets, one planet toy, and lots of space stations. There's moons. And you can explore all this yourself. The basic controls is you, you double left click to zoom into something and it will zoom you in. You can also use scroll wheel to zoom in and out as well as double right clicking will bring you back to the full view. Next is the Mo Trader. Super simple. You can send money to anyone on or offline. You can send them AUEC or you can send them merits, which is prison credits. We'll talk more about that later. Then we have the contract manager. There is lots of contracts here. Delivery, investigation, bounties, mercenary work. And you're going to find most of that in the general tab. Personal is where you'll find the non so lawful missions. Accepted is where your missions you have are. History is the missions you've completed. And then beacons is where you can pay other players to do stuff for you. There's escort and also personal transport. Next is the live AR. This isn't really anything, not important. After that, you have vehicle maintenance services. This is where you repair, restock and refuel whenever you're on a landing pad that you've called for. So you have to be on a landing pad that you've called for. Next is the journal. This is just some lore text that you can read through if you want. And there's even some missions that use the journal, but for the most part, you won't spend a lot of time here. Lastly, we have the brand new reputation tab. Here you can see the organizations in game you've interacted with. Do you have good standing, bad standing? Some of them will even give you a bonus if you have good enough standing with them. 
So now that we're familiar with the Moby Glass, we are going to accept a mission for the Bounty Hunter Evaluation. Hurston is wanting us to take down a bad guy, and we're going to go do it in our Mustang Alpha. Now, keep in mind that this Mustang Alpha is default. It's probably not going to be super great at this. I'm going to leave my recommended build for the Mustang Alpha in the description, and you can build it out yourself. So we go to the star map. We set our location. We find our route. We spool up. And when we get spooled up here, it actually bugs out and it doesn't work. So what you're going to do in a situation like this where you get this bug is you just look away from the target. You'll start spooling up again and then you look back at it and it should work the next try. So when we get to our mission, it actually doesn't work. Uh, the targets don't spawn. This is usually the sign that the server isn't performing. So if this happens to you, you may want to consider changing servers but for the sake of the tutorial we're just going to find another mission the next mission we chose was an ec and alert and essentially it means that someone's in danger this person right here we press t to target them and they are being attacked by this person over here again if you press t you can target them you're going to press g to switch to auto gimbal mode like we talked about earlier again you're looking for the dotted circle so we'll start engaging our target you see his shields top right go down and he's dead so what i'm doing here is i'm just strafing to the left and depending on the server and depending on the mission nbcs can be really hard to take out or really easy these ones seem pretty easy but i'm just strafing to the left i'm trying to stay moving while i shoot and you really just want to continue to circle them until they're dead there are three types of missiles enemies can shoot at you em IR and cross section. I know cross section is a little hard to see. It's like a Wi Fi symbol. And when an enemy missile locks you, it sounds like this. When you get missile locked by an EM or an IR missile, you want to use a flare by pressing H. And if you get a cross section missile, you can't divert it. So you want to use a chaff countermeasure by pressing J. And this will literally break target lock on you for several seconds. You can also outmaneuver and outrun missiles if you're in something small and fast. As of this patch, missiles no longer have perfect targeting. So when you kill your last target, it should give you a mission complete. It didn't give that to us. I think this server is a little funky. I should have known better from earlier when that mission didn't complete that the server was whack. It's a pretty normal thing to do, so don't ever feel like you can't get to a stopping place and just server hop. After that mission, we did take a little bit of damage as well as we used some ammo. So we're going to just go ahead and restock, repair, and refuel. And what you're listening for is these noises. And you're going to see the whole flash here. That actually doesn't. Uh, there was one little bit that didn't get repaired. That's good enough for me. Worst case scenario, if you can't refuel or restock your ship, just scrap it, recall a new ship, and that's going to give you a fresh ship. So now that we've been the good guys, I'm going to do the unthinkable and I'm going to be the bad guy. That's right, I'm going to shoot this UE scum. Now, doing that is going to land me a level 2 crime stat for assaulting an officer. Also, you see this fancy message on my screen that says, Security alerted of your crime stat. Armistice zone privileges revoked. What this means is you can't refuel, you can't call on ships, and you can't set your spawn at law-abiding stations until you get rid of your crime stat. So, the UE is going to make quick work of me. I'm going to land myself in prison. Now, if we make our way down to the middle room, the console is going to say I have... 57 minutes and 20 seconds left now there are three ways to deal with your crime set option number one you can literally just log out option number two you can earn enough merits to get out how it works is one merit equals one second so 3600 merits is going to equal one hour you can also use merits to buy stuff from the commissary so to earn some merits we're going to open up our contract manager and we're going to take a mission to reset a o2 kiosk it's going to tell me in the top middle of my screen where i go so route three depth nine so we'll go down to route three and we'll follow the signs all the way down to number nine you look for the o2 kiosk here you'll click vent and that's it we make our way back to the middle console and it shows that we are eligible for release and we earned 10,000 merits from that one mission. That's pretty good. If you don't have contracts available, the other way to earn merits is to mine. This purplish blue rock being the worst, green being the second best, and then by far pink being the best. This is Haddonite. You're only gonna find this deep in caves at the markers eight, nine, 10 and farther, unless you just get super lucky. 
Now, if you're unlucky like me and your multi-tool bugs out, go into your Moby glass, unequip your multi-tool from the top slot, and then put it in the bottom slot. Save changes, and this should fix it. Once you get that sorted out, what you're going to do is you're going to find your rock. You're going to hold right click. That's going to scan it. You have three bars, white, green, and red. What you want it to do is rise through white, stay in green, and never hit red. You're going to use your mouse wheel up and down to adjust your power level so that it stays in the green zone once the green zone fills out the rock's gonna break into gems you can pick those up by pressing f and stowing them then once you collect all of your gems you're gonna head to the kiosk right before you get back to the main area the more gems you have the more merits you get the quicker you get out and the last way to get out of prison is to escape but i'll let you figure this one out on your own You get a refuel, restock, and a repair at Outpost as long as they have A in Armistice Zone and B landing pads. This is super helpful when you have a crime stat and can't go to space stations. Using your MFD, you can go to the heat menu and overclock all of your weapons, your shields. This will make it perform better at the cost of overheating faster, and you can quite literally hear the difference. This icon here is your flight vector. It's where the momentum of your ship is going, and it's where your ship is going to go. This is great for maneuvering through obstacles. If you're in your ship, you can press tab. This is going to bring you into scan mode. You can hold right click, and this is going to give you an area scan. It will show you ships nearby. And if you're in a mining ship, it will show you mineables nearby. If you hold left click in scan mode, it will show you the name of the ship, the ship's health, the pilot, who's on board, if they have a crime stat, and the materials on board. If you go to your contract manager, you can accept a mission called Call to Arms. This is under Mercenary. For every player or NPC with a crime stat that you kill, you'll be rewarded extra money. If you're having graphical issues or FPS issues or just general issues in Star Citizen, sometimes deleting your shaders folder can be a solution. So what you'll do is you'll go to Program Files, Robert Space Industries, Star Citizen, Live, User, Client, Zero, Shaders. You're gonna delete these. Just make sure to verify in the launcher afterwards. The best resource in Star Citizen for ship components is Urkel.Games. Here you can see DPS, shield health, and all the component info. And if you click the pointer next to the item, bottom right, you can see where it's at in game. A link to my Mustang Alpha build is gonna be in the bio. If some terrible bug happens to you and you can't figure it out, you can always reset your account. Don't worry, this shouldn't get rid of any of your money or your items. You go to robertspaceindustries.com, you click account, you click settings, and then here you click character reset. You'll type in the bug, you'll type in your password, you'll hit submit, and this usually takes about 15 minutes. And with that, that is going to be the end of our tutorial. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope it helped. If you feel like it did, feel free to subscribe. If you have an idea for a video you'd like to see done on Star Citizen, let me know in a comment. And if you have any more questions, join the Discord. We do have a newbie help channel. Or come ask me live on Twitch. I do stream almost every day. Got two? Welcome to Star Citizen. Good luck in the game. Godspeed. And until next time, this is Captain Burks signing off.